Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, family and friends. How's everybody? All right, we're going to pump it up this afternoon. All right, we're here on an auspicious and important occasion. I happen to believe we're going to make history. In fact, all this week, history is being made, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. My name is Rick Adams. I'm the chairperson of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century Board of Directors. I hail from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I co-chair the Western Pennsylvania Black Political Assembly. And relevant to today, I looked up some things about my own Commonwealth, my own state. And I was surprised, but not, not really, to find out that the Pew Charitable Trust did a study. And 24 states have shown an increase in people incarcerated and black people incarcerated. In fact, Pennsylvania was the third highest rate, a 4.3% increase. Half of this increase is in only five states, Pennsylvania, Florida, Indiana, Louisiana, and Alabama. We got serious work to do. We have devastated families, individuals, and communities that have been wrecked. We are here today to declare war on the war on drugs, creating just and humane alternatives to a failed strategy. We're talking about the devastating effects of a racially biased strategy on black communities. All this week, there's been actions all across the country. There's a mighty, mighty movement stirring. I think a time has come I think this period is one of those unique periods. You probably have sensed them like I have in the last few years when you knew a change was gonna come. We have had actions all week. We've working in collaboration with the Drug Policy Alliance. This Sunday, the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference under the leadership of the brilliant Dr. Iva Crothers they're sponsoring a Faith and Action Sunday across this country. Today, we're going to lay out a strategy, along with a lot of testimony and dialogue describing the problem, but we're always coming with some solutions also. You know, a lot of times we get in these gatherings, and what do we do? We talk about the problem, the problems. Somehow we run out of time, and we don't get to the solutions. Well, we're gonna do that today. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna put the call out for advocates on behalf of justice and a humane policy to turn around this failed 40-year war on drugs. Can you, can, you, can you get with that 40 years? I'm not much older than that. 40 <laughs> years we've been fighting this battle, and I dare say we lost. We got all kind of folks hurt, all kind of people dead, all kind of people incarcerated. We got individuals crazy out their minds. We got people addicted to drugs, infected with AIDS, communities rendered crazy. I just had my house broken into last week. It's a rampage. It's, a, it's an epidemic that's eating at us. And what we need is a massive social, political, economic, a mass community response to turn this around. There's no other way. And so, Hopefully, you will join with our allies, including the Black Family Summit, which is a coalition, a collaboration of organizations that are dealing with the healing of our community. We come together under the umbrella of the Institute of the Black World, but our mission is to be an action and thinking tank. Not a think tank, but an act think tank. In fact, we're rappers. You like that? We're rappers. We are. Because we're looking at research, we're looking at advocacy, and we're looking at policy. That's rap. R-A-P. That's the relevant rap, not to denigrate my hip-hop brothers and sisters, because a lot of them are doing some good work, and we're trying to work with them. We're going to call all the community together to address this epidemic and this problem before us. It is now my pleasure to call someone up that I in working with the Institute of the Black World have got, gotten to know and to love and to respect. And that's brother Baba Leonard Dunstan. He's the convener of the Black Family Summit. He's an Institute of the Black World board member. He's uh, chair emeritus of the National Association of Black Social Workers, 
and he's one of the straight on brothers that I've met. One of the straight on folks that you know you can rely on and he's gonna come with some real stuff. Brother Leonard Dunstan. Thank you, Brother Rick. Hotep. Hotep. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. In the interest of time, I want to briefly and succinctly summarize the development of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century Black Family Summit. On October 14, 2005, at the Million More Movement, I was honored to have been asked by Minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to co-convene with him the heads of 30 national black organizations, professional as well as activists, in order to develop a partnership to support and strengthen black families. Specifically, at that time, the displaced families of Katrina and Rita. The following January 2006, we reconvened in New Orleans, Louisiana, and 16 of those organizations joined us to develop and entertain the ideas of public policy workshops, healing sessions, and interdenominational sessions. Since its inception, the Black Family Summit, in the spirit of operational unity, has sponsored several forums that were geared toward garnering federal, state, and local legislative support on behalf of black families and our communities. Those forums have included six congressional public policy forums on Capitol Hill through the gracious support of Congressman John Conyers, who is here today, Dr. Elsie Scott, and other members of the Black Congressional Caucus. We have also convened a national black organization leadership dialogue and published results via Howard University School of Social Work with Dr. Patricia Bent Goodley. Under Dr. Goodley's leadership at Howard University, we've also published other Black Family Summit public policy proceedings. Finally, as a last example that I'd like to share with you of a collaborative work, our collaborative work, I want to very briefly share the work that we're doing currently around Haiti. And here's some of the background regarding the Haiti Family Preservation Task Force. It is an initiative of our institute. This task force was developed and organized by a diverse group of volunteers of African descent to address the needs of Haitian children following the horrific January 12, 2010 earthquake. Its primary purpose is to advocate for the preservation of Haitian families with particular emphasis on the maintenance of Haitian culture and values. The task force is committed to exploring and identifying appropriate ways for children who are separated from their parents and relatives to be cared for primarily by Haitians. Special attention has been given to kinship care as the best option to ensure that. We also have been working with the Oasis Institute, which is an emerging 800-bed facility uh, in Haiti. We are in the process now of raising funds to support that. It is run by a brother by the name of Lionel Pressoir, who is very close to us. Very briefly, the composition of the group is nurses, black nurses, black psychologists, black psychiatrists, black social workers, black educators, adoption experts. There are seven black family development or adoption agencies still left in this country. They are part of our family constellation. Kinship care experts, family preservation experts, and we've also had at the table federal and state social workers who have helped us frame the issues from a federal perspective. Uh, now I'd like to just, as you can probably appreciate better than I can, we could not do this work alone. So what I'd like to do very briefly is to introduce some of that family group that has helped make all the work that uh, I've just sort of laid out for you possible. And I'm, with no particular order, I'm going to just call out their names. And as they stand, I'll ask them to just remain standing so you can see the full spectrum of who comprises this Black Family Summit constellation. The first person I'd like to call out is Dr. Bernadette Lacey, who is a board member with the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS here in DC. Brother Salim Adolfo, who is the vice president of the National Black United Front. Brother Joseph Muhammad, who is president of the International Black Association of Black Professional Firefighters. Brother George Wheeler, who is the chief financial officer for the National Black Psychiatrist of America, Sister Clintana Van, who's the Assistant Chief Operational Officer for the National Black 
Psychiatrist of America, Dr. Lucy Perez, who I had not seen yet, she should be here, the executive board member of the All Healers Mental Health Alliance, Brother Michael Harris, who is chair of the Black Farmers and Agriculturalists Association, Sister Karen Allen, who is the national secretary for the National Association of Black Social Workers, Brother Eugene Perrier, who is a Howard University senior and the executive committee of an organization called the Answer Coalition, Brother Ryan Saunders of the National Action Network, he should be here, Sister Amy Chen, and Sister Laura Carter of the Hip Hop Caucus Educational Fund, I saw them earlier, Sisters Willette Coleman and Edith Billups from the National Organization of Black County of, uh, County of Officials, Sister Joyce Burrell, who is the director of the Juvenile Justice Program, the American Institute for Research, Sister Sullivan Robinson, who is the executive director of the National Black Leadership Committee's AIDS right here. She's over to my left. Uh, I also have, as you can well imagine, I have just sort of misplaced my notes with all these other people. <laughs> so as I fumble and try and find that, thank you. Uh, Gary Flowers is here, but the Gary Stan, please, the executive director of Black Leadership Forum. Uh, I also referenced a few others. Let me get them out of the way right now. Minister Anthony Muhammad, who is representing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in some place. There he is over there. Uh, Sister Daryl Baldwin, who is the DC rep for the Center for New Leadership on Urban Solutions. And finally, we have others who have joined our family recently. Uh, the Reverend Dr. David Cunningham, he should be here someplace. Reverend C.H. Johnson, thank you very much. Dr. Walter Fackett, I think he's over here to my uh, right. Bishop Ronald Allen, who is with the Drugs and Drugs Has No Religious Choice, he's here with us. And I think I have just about now concluded all the family members who are here. Please show your love by thanking them for all the work they do on behalf of the Black Family Summit. <laughs>